I was trained as a painter, and even before the Academy of Fine Arts, I, I graduated as a painter, but because of the Academy, which was super conservative in many ways, I started to be bored with the painting, and uh, that's why I somehow evolved in the different medias. And uh, at the end, I decided to not care so much about the medium, but the, what I want to say. So if I would think about the link between all this uh, way of expression, it would be just like my thoughts or... It, I mean, always, it, sometimes it's uh, difficult to say what is my main goal, but uh, but it, the, what I want to say is the, the idea is always more important than the form or the medium. I consider myself as a conceptual artist, it's more like a, like, I, I like this statement because uh, it's also about if the conceptual artist can be funny artist or dealing with pop culture or not, so I'm trying to find a new, um, new form for the conceptual art, which is, we not, which is not so really? obviously look like conceptual art, but using such a strong visual elements in my work that people can't really treat me serious or they can't really treat this work as a conceptual work. Even today I was talking with Eric Bronson about this issue and he said like, you know, the conceptual artist can be really so funny. Even Bruce Norman, he was more, he, the, the humor was much more present at the beginning when he started to working as a conceptual artist. And, but later on he switched a bit and I'm also interested in this kind of cliches of being a serious conceptual artist and this funny, not serious pop artist. Warhol have this both attitudes and I'm very interested in that. So I'm also testifying this motif of the Eastern and Western banana. And uh, I'm trying to find myself in this position of being like here in New York with the with my work and uh, how people are who are meeting me for the first time how they uh, feel about my work and how they are um, defining me. Yeah, I don't know if I can call myself a real curator because it's always like I. I think it's a good uh, thing to call it like a conceptual curatorial project, so it's more like an artistic practice connected with the curatorial strategies. Sometimes I'm pushing the borders of uh, what we think is accept acceptable or ethical when you are a curator. And sometimes I'm crossing this border, then it's something uh, between art and curatorial uh, practice. and. Uh, at the end, most of this uh, project, are, actually there were only a few of them, but um, all of them at the end, they look like the huge installations built with the works of other artists. That's how it looks at the end. And sometimes, like in the show I was creating in the Museum of Art in which at the end you ha it was even not any art included. So it was more about the whole it, it was a kind of critical statement about the institution, but also the way how the artists are building the image and uh, yeah, treating the objects. And if there everything, we, we, if everything, what is present in the gallery is become a ready-made or art object or or not, and this notion of what is art and what is not, not the art is very, it's like a crucial for me. I think it's a if I could say. Uh, what is the most important in my work? And it would be this statement, like the notion of what is art and what is not, and who is deciding about it and how it works. For me, this exhibition, Facts, the first open gay exhibition in Poland, was kind of statement, but also the continuation of the way I was working. It was in a private flat, so it was dealing a lot with the space itself, the way how the exhibition was arranged, arranged um, the walls, murals, pictures, a lot of things about the private and public in the same time. After this coming out exhibition, 
it become clear that everything I will do in Poland, particularly, will be treated as a gay thing. If I would paint flowers, it would be gay flowers, landscape would be gay landscape. So I started to also play with this uh, image of being a gay artist in that kind of country, or generally of being a gay artist and dealing with conceptual or minimal art. And sometimes uh, when I'm playing with the history of Polish neo art art, it's this issue is present, like uh, most of these icons of the art are men, male figures, so there is always this feeling that I'm queering, queering them <laughs> somehow, but uh, I'm trying to keep it in a balance, it's just a queer touch and sometimes it's not visible for some people, sometimes it's over-interpreted because it's quite simple like sometimes it's almost like a joke like even if you use the pink color and you're a man it's so gay but when you think about it in the terms of art, contemporary art, about the colors, painters it's uh, like it's like absurd, it's totally absurd so one of these words referring to the famous conceptual Polish artist Edward Krasinski when I were reinterpreting his blue scotch and the scotch was I just re re replaced the color for pink it was so easy so f f somehow naive but for people it was so intense because uh, and at the end it's just the pink uh, scotch so uh, I found it funny like in the 21st century people can be so focus on that uh, kind of uh, segregation, but the pink color itself is dedicated to the women or the gay people and I, I really can get it, so I can just play with that. I was invited by the Museum of Art, Museum Stuck in Łódź, and then uh, I was working with the part of the collection, so the performance was actually going on the um, architecture of the collection, uh, the, the part of the collection dedicated to the early video art and uh, new avant-garde Polish art. And then uh, I asked one guy, the, it's not an artist or it's like just a regular guy, to be involved as a figure as a kind of performer, but the, the whole idea was about the replacing some small details in the concept of performance art. So I was really interested in uh, two things. One, In one hand it was a possibility to show the naked male body and also to kind of private striptease in a, in a very public space. And uh, in the other hand it was uh, the idea of the how you can manipulate the viewer and how the viewer can find him, they, like how the audience can find themselves in a situation like they can see actual action, they can see only the frames I wanted to show, and uh, because of this whole kind of artsy, um, uh, I don't know how to say that because of this cameras the medium this black and at the end of the video looks black and white very old-fashioned kind of very artsy reminds the documentations of the video so people were uh, people were I think they were they thought that they have to find a kind of a way of uh, explanation why it looks like that what it's all about but they started to reinterpret it in a very symbolical way which was quite funny because uh, it wasn't my intention. And the title Ready to Die is I just took from the tattoo the guy had on the chest and it was like re he really had this tattoo. Some people thought it just printed or something. And they thought that it's a very symbolical title for the whole piece. They, many people would talk about the Holocaust, the being a victim and all these symbols. Yeah, and, and I think at the end it was also the... For me it was a question if we can really see the naked body in the art context without uh, without thinking that it's dressed in art, just the body. And it, it happened like, it's quite difficult for the people to think that they see really like naked men in the gallery, because then it will be a 
uh, very uncomfortable for them. So I think it was kind of they, they were trying to somehow cover him. That that's how I call it that they covered him in art instead of the clothes, and then everything is okay. Yeah, with the backstage video, the idea was uh, at the beginning to comment somehow, to make a commentary to the whole exhibition. It was in Krakow, the exhibition was at the same title, Backstage, and it was the selection of my video and photographic works dedicated to my relations with the models and the kind of fake relation, like fake uh, situations uh, in the studio and in the... Um, also in the context of art. So the whole exhibition was dealing a lot with the me involving uh, uh, random guys, mostly straight guys in the project. And I asked the gallery, uh, it's the biggest uh, public uh, gallery in uh, Krakow, as I asked them to put the ad in the newspapers, in the internet, at the university, everywhere they could that we are, the artist is searching for the young, brave men who are not afraid to work with him on the art project. And then it was announced that my name, surname, and it worked for the exhibition, and it, will be, it was announced that it will be a two days of casting. Yeah, I wanted to testify the kind of uh, Polish shame of being uh, naked or showing the male, especially male body in the public space. That's why I was asking them a lot how they can compare the feeling being uh, almost naked or naked in the gallery space and at the swimming pool out at the beach. But I, actually I was expected that they would be more uh, shy and at the end everybody were <laughs> surprised, even they, that they were go so far. And not only with being naked but also with the way they were talking about themselves. They, like, they were like completely, it was like a confession somehow and uh, this is what I didn't expect it and that was uh, additional level somehow for the work because uh, my idea was that I'm not going to push them but just going with this strict concept, strict rule, I'm always asking why.